How do you build a company that attracts billionaires? Putting together the dream team and the significance of Oscar De La Hoya investing in PHB agency in this episode of The Money Smart Guy. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here with the steam company at Lake Tahoe at this $25 million lodge. South Tahoe, looking at this amazing view. You should see this view. It's amazing. Excited to be here. Million dollar retreat. Here with 50 of our best friends in business and most definitely my mentor, CEO founder of PHP NC and host of Valuetainment, Patrick Ben David. Patrick, so glad that we're here. Our third year in a row running third this. Third year in a row, yeah. It's completely changed and it's 50 their lives. And their spouses, so we have 98 people here, wow. right, with right. Uh, their spouses. But uh, it's exciting to do this traditionally now, uh, every year where we get together and put a strategy together for the following year. It is going to be a very strange 2018. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> very <laughs> weird 2018. <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, Patrick, you know, uh, I've been with you since 2015. And then and that evolution, of course, we'll introduce these gentlemen here to your left here in a second. But I've just seen the evolution of PHP Agency grow, not only from a corporate standpoint, but also from a field perspective, from a, a aspiring entrepreneur perspective. You know, what was it like for you to build a company like PHP Agency to attract such gentlemen like these on your left? You know, sometimes, uh, uh, you know how we say, don't listen to your critics and don't listen to this and, you know, just don't listen to your haters. Sometimes haters are right. So when we first started a, 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 a PHP, I was by myself and a lot of my critics would say, Pat is a great sales leader, right? Uh, who knows how to run a business because I had run an operation and business, all this other stuff. But, you know, to become a CEO, chief executive officer, you can pay 500 bucks to be called a CEO. But I didn't feel like I was truly uh, uh, building the company properly at initially the first year or two because I was all by myself. So mm -hmm. that's when I realized the bigger the vision is, the more help we need, right? So we went and we got Amor as a chief compliance officer who did a phenomenal job. And then after that, uh, Tom was on the board. And once we brought Tom on board, things changed a lot. Uh, and then after Tom, who became our president uh, of PHP, changed the entire technology base, the speed, the relationships. He introduced us to the Catalan. He worked the entire deal with Oscar De La Hoya, Adelaide Group, and Brenner from beginning to the end, put endless hours into it. And then through that, it came to a point where, you know, when you're seeing the deposits, we had the biggest commission cycle this week ever. Right. And when you're starting to pay the kind ago. of money that we're paying uh, uh, today, we realized, you know, our, our board, Greg Scher from Ambina told us, listen, I think it's time for us to go get a killer CFO. Uh, a, a couple things, uh, you know, first, you know, I'm very selective. We're very selective with making new investments. We look at several hundred different investment opportunities each year. We make one or two investments. That's it. Um, so it's really the cream of the crop. Business is with the highest potential that we're looking at investing in. Um, the fact that you know our investment for this year is PHP, it says a lot to the people, the plan, the trajectory of the business. Um, the white space you have to, to, to continue to grow. You know, Golden Boy and, and myself and PHP, I mean, we, we, uh, I'm really happy that we have come together um, to, to really uh, um, make people aware of, of what's really important. And uh, we went out there, we went through, uh, uh, filtered through 40, Tom went through 40 of them, and then the 40 went to 12, and then the 12 went to six, and out of the six, we interviewed the uh, uh, six of them, Ian being one of them. He was my first round draft pick <laughs> and uh, heard his story. I said, uh, we got to have Ian on the team. So it'd be good for Ian to tell a story sure. yeah, prior to uh, uh, what he did with PHP. So Ian, what was your background prior to PHP? Well, sure. Thank you, Patrick. I'm a, a CPA. I've got 20 years worth of uh, financial services experience. I've been involved in two IPOs, taking two companies public from uh, you know, starting companies all the way up to the point where we went to the public markets. Uh, most recently, I was the CFO of a startup auto finance company where we went from zero loans to 400 million worth of loans in about four years. Uh, I've also been involved in about $3.5 billion worth of M&A transactions. And so lots of experience with lots of different companies, all in finance and accounting roles. Uh, but I can say this, I don't think I've ever worked at a place where I've seen so many passionate people just in the three weeks that I've been here. I've never seen this before. So this is truly amazing and I'm really happy to be a part of this. 
So I heard also on your resume, or read on your resume, that you've been part of also Beale Bank. That was a, yes. Uh, what, what type of transaction were you with over there too as well? So uh, at Beale Bank, I, I was a CEO of a mortgage servicing company. Uh, during the financial crisis back in 2008 and 2009, we bought over $5 billion worth of loans. And so I was responsible for onboarding those and servicing all those loans. It's about 20,000 loans. Uh, I also uh, evaluated and purchased two failed banks worth about $2.7 billion for, for Andy during the FDIC crisis. So uh, great experience, managed a team of about 400 people and taking down two different banks. So that was Check that quite, out, quite huh? an experience. Yeah. So you, we were having a conversation yesterday and I think something really important from you is to do this. I could have gotten a job anywhere. I could have gotten paid anywhere else. I think, but you know, larger salary, whatever the case may be. But why did you choose PHP agency? Uh, well, obviously, the opportunity to work with Patrick and, and, and after being a Tom, it's just uh, these guys are amazing and it's a tremendous experience and opportunity to be able to work with them. But, but ultimately, you know, in my experience in corporate finance, seeing what I've seen uh, and, and what you know, I think a lot of people talk about in the overall economy is nobody is addressing the needs in the middle class. Nobody's addressing the needs. Of, of the minority base that's out there. And that's the biggest growing segment of this population. It's getting huge. And nobody's nobody's paying attention to it, but except you, you guys. You, you've been uh, in the financial services for a while. You're a CPA. Yeah. You, know, you, you come from a background in finance. You see the industry, yeah. and, and that's what you're, that's what you're observing. Yeah, I mean, this, this, you know, to be able to be a part of a company that is focusing on changing people's lives and educating people. Uh, you know, I think I've, I've read articles from Patrick and, you know, people don't get educated in high school about finances. People don't get educated in college about finances. They're getting educated from the PHP workforce. We are changing their lives by educating them here. It does, it's not happening anyplace else. So this, I mean, again, the mission of what we are doing is just, I'm, I'm just proud to be a part of it. Awesome. Thanks, Ian. Uh, next question here is for, for Tom Ellsworth. Uh, we call him Three Comma Tommy. And uh, he's also the biz doc on Valuetainment, breaking down businesses and their successes and their failures. And, and, and Tom, you've been part of lots of transactions. Three companies that just went from scratch to sell, totaling over $1.1 billion. Um, what's it like to get an investor attracted enough, a billionaire investor at that, to be attracted, like an Oscar De La Hoya, like a Gabriel Brenner, like an Outlier Group, Greg Share? What's it like to get PHP agency attractive enough to have the attention of those type of people? Well, the beautiful thing is you don't have to make it attractive enough. You don't dress it up to attract them. You present it. Uh, investors look at three things. They look at concept, they look at team, and then they look at sector. And sector is what they're an expert in, oil and gas, insurance, because they'll know that neighborhood really well. Mm -hmm. But what they trust and they invest in is teams. Teams in sectors they trust with a concept that they think has got a shot. And it's in that order. Team, sector, concept. And so you present good operating results and the vision of the team and the person and Pat's background, where he came from, there's a lot of authenticity and transparency in that. And they see what he's done and you really just present it. And then you work the network of investors that work that and have one meeting to the next meeting until somebody says, you know what, this is a, this is a growth capital opportunity. This is a growth. This is where I, I naturally love to jump on the train. And so I like this. And um, then it, it kind of sells itself. Now, negotiating the actual terms is a whole other fun, yeah. fun circus. I, 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 that should have been recorded, man. That was purely entertaining, to say the least, some of the conversations. Yes, yes. It, 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 boy, that, that could be a, a reality series on, really? on MSNBC. Yeah, when uh, you get into uh, negotiating it. Uh, that, how, how much? How much? I know, I know there's some due diligence. How much due diligence did they do um, to research PHP and make sure that we are who we say who we say we are? Uh, well, they did a full accounting audit. Uh, we had just completed audits as a small company. One of the things that you always want to do is around your fifth anniversary, start doing full audits. So whether someone's buying the company or it's time to expand or it's time to get things, have you done an audit? Yeah. I did an audit through a top 10 national uh, CPA firm, auditing firm, we did it. And they always say the same thing. Okay, fine, but I'm gonna put my guys in, I'm gonna do it. So they audit the auditor. It's They're double the cost. So you're, <laughs> you're, you're bringing your own audit and then they bring their own auditors who stay there for a few weeks and they go through everything. Wow. When I tell you everything, everything. Mm -hmm. These guys would get emails from Moral's best friend, Moral over there, a guy named Dan, who would send a list of questions late at night uh, so how about this? So how about that? And then Tom and Moral would sit there and say, does he really need to know this? Wow. Yes. 
Yeah, so there's there's operational diligence, <laughs> financial diligence, which is a barrel of monkeys, and then uh, finally team diligence. So they'll do background checks on the team. That's easy yeah. enough with blocking and tackle. Sign here, they check us out, we're all good. So, so, so in other words, when somebody says, uh, somebody comes in our workshops and they say they really like to get started with PHP and C, and they say, I need to do some research. I mean, outside of them having access to Google, how much research are these guys really getting involved in? Well, I can proudly say, even though people would say, oh, you're conflicted because you're part of it, this thing has been triple validated. There's been three full audits in the last 20 months. You know, audits for two years, and then the audit due diligence at the time that um, Adelia Brenner and De La Hoya's people um, came together. And then along with that, there's also legal diligence. So when I'm done with the accounting diligence and a million questions there, legal diligence, they wanna see every carrier contract, they wanna, they research, have you been sued? They go through everything, which is what you or I would do if mm -hmm. we're gonna put, you know, uh, you know, eight figures into something, that's exactly what you or I would do. Not only they do it with professionals that rarely smile. <laughs> <laughs> Until the end, then they're all happy and you have a nice thing and a nice closing dinner and it's all fun. But along the way, that's their job. They've been loving the dividends checks, though. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. We're, we're, you know, first quarter into it, we're above plan. Very good. Very good. So for aspiring entrepreneurs out there, Patrick, aspiring entrepreneurs out there looking to go in business, they want to change their next year, they want to plant a flag and say they want to have financial resolution, knowing that the dream team you put together here, these gentlemen to your left, you know, what would you say to somebody out there that was in your position, that uh, came, from, came from the military, veteran entrepreneur, veteran looking to entrepreneurship, somebody out there saying, listen, if you're looking for something to do, actually putting money into a franchise, why consider PHP Agency? Why consider PHP Agency? So, you know, for me, it's <clears throat> a few different things. One is the industry is a beautiful industry. So you look at a lot of uh, uh, people right now who talk about, let's just say, uh, Bitcoin, or they'll talk about solar, or they'll talk about you know, all these exciting trends that come, right? And they're exciting. People make money, all these things timely. What I wanted to bank on is I wanted to bank on an industry that's been around for a few hundred years, which insurance has been around for 2,000 years. The Roman Empire used to give annuities to their loyal soldiers. So life insurance is not a new game. Mm -hmm. It's been around for a couple thousand years. It's going to be around for a couple thousand years. And uh, no one ever on their deathbed said, I wish I had less life, insur life insurance. Yeah, let me, so, ref let me yeah, give that to I back. wish I had more. <laughs> I wish I would have gotten something. Right. You know, you hear stories all the time when... You see a GoFundMe online, hey, can you please put $100, such and such as uncle passed away or father passed away, yeah. and they didn't have life insurance, and it shouldn't get to that point. So that's a validation, the fact that the life insurance industry is going to be growing because whatever industry people don't pay attention to, you give attention to that, you have the most opportunity to grow it. While everybody's chasing this side, and no one's paying attention here, go make this better. That's life insurance. Everybody's trying to go do technology, all these things. We went this side. Uh, so that's industry. Whether you do it with us or not, you got to get into the insurance industry. The second thing is to realize that distribution is the way to go. No matter what you build, it has to be a distribution thing. Facebook has, you know, 1.9 billion uh, uh, users, right? You got Snapchat grew based on users. You had all these other companies. Walmart has 2.2, 2.3 million employees. That's distribution. Amazon is a distribution channel. So on the insurance side. The industry doesn't have a lot of agents. It's got a couple hundred thousand licensed agents, give or take, right? So it needs more agents, and there's so much demand for it right now with 95 million adults in America not having any life insurance, 41% no life insurance, yet there's not enough agents for it. So this 200,000 licensed agents, I foresee it in the next 5, 10, 15 years going to a million licensed agents. And imagine if you run an agency of 100, of 500, of 1,000, maybe 10,000, that you're running yourself because it's distribution. Army has a distribution of soldiers that are ready to go to war, right? Life insurance, the same thing. So you got the industry, honorable industry to be a part of. You got distribution, it's a model to be a part of. The other one is figuring out a way to position yourself where you're an entrepreneur, right? Where you can wake up and say, you know, I wanna work so hard this year where I wanna make $300,000. You can't do that if you're working at Sears saying, how hard do I need to work this year at Sears to make $300,000? Walmart. Just, or well, it's just not going to have the good time. I'm sorry, I don't make three hundred. dollars Our boss doesn't make three hundred. dollars No one makes three hundred, dollars except for the executives that have been here for a while. So when, you, when you're an entrepreneur, there's a the pros and the cons. The cons is everything's on you. If you're a bad boss, you're going to fail. Uh, but if you're somebody that's clear about what you want and you want to get to work, you can really position yourself to win big. And then last but not least, 
You know, you look at PHP and so many different people were here for the first time. Sure. 70% of people that are here out of the 98, the 58 uh, leaders with their spouses that were here, 98 total that were here. So many of them are looking around and saying, I've never seen this many group of people that are sincere, genuine, that I can work with for a long time and build incredible relationships with, right? I think Ewan was saying that uh, to see a CEO sit there and rip for 14 hours a day and then have everybody, their guys, rip for 14 hours a day. I think it was pretty impressive on your end. And, and then have a tatted guy from Bakersfield make him cry, <laughs> which was fantastic, right? Um, well, he, you went up to him. What you tell him? You told Ricky. You I said, told him the first time I saw him, I didn't think he would make me cry from emotions. <laughs> it would have been from something else. <laughs> he got me crying emotionally. You crazy. got to put a picture of what Ricky looks yeah, like so yeah. they know what we're talking about. Ricky Aguilar. So but but I would say PHP wise, you know. Um, we're a, we're a fun group. What we offer with the comp plan, what we offer with our incentives, what we offer, what we do for our, uh, our leaders and our associates. We have a very simple model. Every morning, my expectation of the team at the home office is we have to wake up, make this thing better today than it was yesterday. It is a very simple formula. Beat your prior best. And then on the field side, we have guys like yourself who, um, you know, prior to being here with a former company, I think you were there for three and a half years. Mm-hmm. Your best year was 160. Yep. You made two. My old, wife and I. Yep. You, and you I guys, you and Sheena made 208 here. The first, first year. year, you made 646 uh, the second year. 646? 646. And then you, you're at. We're, we're crossing 920. We're going to finish nine figures. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. Yeah, seven nine figures. figures. <laughs> yeah, like we're going to finish seven figures. figures. Oh, Excuse me, that's where I'm going. We're all done. So, seven figures. Figure se- se- you cross years. seven figures uh, by the end of the month that's this month. That's right. And so, uh, to me, if I'm watching, I'm saying, wait a minute, I can work with a guy like you to learn what you did to get to this point, and your wife, um, everybody here. Um, he's interviewing us, but quite frankly, it needs to be the other way around because everybody here was wanting to find out what he and Sheena were doing. And so if I'm you watching this, whether you choose to do the business or not, I would 100% want to sit down with he and his wife one-on-one and make a decision for yourself whether you want to do business with uh, 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 us or not, but 100% at least give it a shot and sit with them, get on a call with them, and uh, decipher from there whether this is something you want to do or not. So with that being said, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, make sure you subscribe to our channel. If you are watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like, make sure you share and comment, share us your thoughts. We'd love to know what you think, love to know what your perspective is. And uh, listen, this is one of the big reasons why I'm here at PHP Agency. Look at this executive team here to my left. I would have never been able to do this completely on my own. So one of the exciting things here is about building leverage and being able to be in a position to take advantage of that. So that being said, from here, from Lake Tahoe at this wonderful lodge, until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue, continue to love, love smart, smart. be money smart, smart today. today.